In this video, we're going to examine the principle of virtual work for bending and apply this principle of virtual work to the analysis of beams so we can calculate the deflection or rotation of a point along a beam. So we have a beam in the drawing and we have an arbitrary loading. In this case, we put a UDL of uh, intensity omega or W. And we wish to find, as a result of applying this UDL, we have a deflection, but we wish to find the deflection at just the point shown, the deflection delta. So in order to do this, what we need to do is look at how the bending varies along the beam and use this subsequently in our internal work and external work. So what we'll do is examine here this little portion of the beam where we have a differential element of width dx. What I'm actually going to do is draw a free body diagram all the way along from the left hand side until I make a cut in this differential element dx. So as a result of the loading I would get a reaction R the loading would still be on there. I would expect to get a shear force, capital V, and a moment M at the point where I make the cut, but would keep the beam in equilibrium. And so these shear force and bearing moment come from the right-hand side of the beam. As a result of the loading, we would expect the beam to undergo some deformation. So as well as deforming, we would expect the beam to rotate. So if it was initially vertical, we would expect that the beam would rotate a small amount. And this small amount we call d theta. And the rotation of the beam d theta, if we recall what we did for the double integration method, we can state that d theta equals m over ei dx. So this is down to the real moments and the real loads being applied. Similar to the principle of virtual work or the unit load method that we introduced for trusses, we wish to find the deflection at just a point along the beam. So what we do for beams is almost the same idea is we now have the same beam with the same support conditions and we will subject this beam at the point where we wish to know the deflection delta and in the direction that we wish to know the deflection, so in this case, in the y direction, the vertical direction, we will subject this beam to a unit load. As a result of this unit load, if we go back to our differential element and look at the free body diagram of the differential element, so we now have a reaction force that I'm going to call little r. We still have a shear force that I'll call little v and a bending moment that I would call little m just down to the unit of virtual load being applied. So we can say that this virtual moment little m, so here, will do work and work is always force times distance or moment times rotation. So we can say that the work done would be the moment multiplied by the rotation that this moment goes through. So moment times d theta. So d theta is the rotation that came from the real loads, but m is the moment due to the virtual load. So we can expand this. So M from our 
formula for d theta so d theta is m over e i d x so that equals m multiplied by m over e i d x so this is our internal work we can also say that our virtual load as the beam deflects due to the real loading the beam will deflect an amount delta so the external work will be force times distance so that will be the unit load one multiplied by the distance delta that it has gone through and then we need to invoke that internal work must be equal to external work and so we gather these two terms together and we write that one dot delta is equal to the integral between naught and l so that's the length of the beam of m m over e i d x so the integral we're using because we're expanding the concept from not just the little differential element that we've identified but every differential element along the length of the beam and this is a pretty important equation so that's worth highlighting in your notes and so let's just highlight everything that's in this equation so this is the the virtual load delta is the real deflection m now is the virtual moment capital m is the real moment and finally e and i so e is the young's modulus so the stiffness of the beam and i is the second moment of area or the geometry of the beam so in a real problem both the virtual moment will actually be a function of x and the real moment will also be a function of x and both will need to be multiplied together and then subsequently integrated so in this manner we can find the deflection of a point along the beam we can also proceed in a similar manner if we wish to find the rotation of a point along the beam so if we wish to find the rotation of a point along this beam we would choose the point where we wish to find out what the value of the rotation and in this case we now would apply a unit moment at the point where we wish to know the rotation and in the direction that we wish to know the rotation and again the beam would have exactly the same support conditions as the beam with the real loading on it as a result of applying this unit moment we would again have a free body diagram just up to the point where the small differential element dx was situated and we would have a reaction force r i'll give this subscript theta a shear force little v theta and a moment m theta and proceeding in exactly the same manner as before with the internal work and external work the external work would now be moment times rotation so the external work would be the moment which has a unit value multiplied by the rotation which would be a d theta 
and when we could integrate this for every differential element to give ourselves a theta. So we finally would get, when we equate internal work and external work together, we would get a formula. One dot theta is equal to the integral over the entire length of the beam of the function m theta, which varies with x, multiplied by the real bending moment function from the real loading on the beam, which again is a function of x, and divided by the material properties and the geometric properties of the beam ei, and integrated over dx. And we're going to show in the next couple of videos some examples of how to apply this method to some realistic problems.